He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. So let's try a few questions associated with ionization energy. So for the first question, it says, for the second ionization energies, the correct order is, and we have carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine in various orders uh, from, from larger to smaller. And we have to choose the correct order. The second one says the element with the highest first ionization energy is, and we have four options there, and then we're looking at for the third ionization energies, the correct order is, is, and we have sodium, magnesium, aluminum, and silicon. Notice that we have the same order written, but the, uh, the arrows themselves, the greater than or less than symbols, do change. So those are different orders, uh, and we have to choose the right one there. So if you're not sure how to go about this, check out my tutorial on periodic trends, and then give this a try. So let's take a look at the first question here, and it will be useful to pull up the periodic table. So let's identify the elements in question. Here is this block right here with carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. And we know that ionization energy is going to increase as we go to the right on a period. That's just a general trend, so we would, in, in a general way, expect to see uh, that increase as we go to the right. And so our first instinct might be to just choose D and say that it's going to be fluorine is greater than oxygen, is greater than nitrogen, is greater than carbon, because that would be what obeys the general trend. But we don't want to go too fast because we will uh, it will be a good idea to actually check out the orbital diagrams for these elements. So let's pull those up. Here is carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. These are the orbital diagrams, and we can see the 1s orbital and the 2s orbital all completely full. And then we have the 2p orbitals, which are all full to some degree depending on the element. So if we're talking about the second ionization energy, let's go ahead and perform the first ionization so that we can look at the species that is actually going to be the one that matters for the second ionization. So let's take away one electron and let's draw the new orbital diagrams. So these will be for the plus one cations, essentially. So notice that carbon has lost one of its electrons. Nitrogen has lost that third one there. Oxygen has lost that one paired electron, and fluorine has lost one of its paired electrons. So this is the thing that needs to ionize to get the two plus ion. This is what we're looking at to figure out the second ionization energy. And the thing that is interesting is that oxygen has this situation where its 2p orbitals are precisely half full. There is one electron in each of those orbitals. And that is a particularly stable situation. So it is going to be a little bit harder to ionize this species than we might otherwise expect. And so actually it's going to be a little bit harder to get an electron from oxygen for the second ionization than it will be for fluorine. So that part of the trend is actually going to reverse. So whereas we would expect fluorine, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, oxygen and fluorine are going to flip. And so it's oxygen first and then fluorine and then nitrogen and carbon as we would expect. So that one is a little bit tricky. We did need to draw these orbital diagrams in order to get the right answer. Now looking at the second one, the element with the highest first ionization energy is, and again we have a similar uh, block of elements here. We have boron through oxygen. Once again, let's pull up these orbital diagrams so we can see exactly what's going on. This time we're looking at the first ionization energy, so we don't have to take away any electrons. Let's just see exactly what we have. And now once again, this is very similar to the previous question. Nitrogen has an electron in each of those p orbitals. So it has that p subshell half full. Once again, that is a particularly stabilizing situation. So it's actually going to be a little bit harder to ionize nitrogen than we would expect. And in fact, a little bit harder to ionize nitrogen than oxygen, because if oxygen loses that paired electron, it will attain that status, that half full P subshell status. So 
Uh, contrary to the trend, it will be nitrogen here that has the highest ionization energy, the highest first ionization energy. Now for this last question, we're looking at the third ionization energy for each of these elements. Let's pull up the relevant block again. We're looking at sodium, magnesium, aluminum, and silicon. And so once again, it's going to be very important for us to take a look at what is actually being ionized for that third ionization. So here we have sodium, magnesium, aluminum, and silicon. Let's take away one electron. So this is our first ionization. So notice that for sodium, that 2s electron is gone. And then for each element as we go down, we've lost an electron from above. Now let's go ahead and perform a second ionization. And so now we have lost even one more electron from what we have just seen. So for each of these species, one of those electrons has been removed again. And so now these orbital diagrams on the lower right, this is what we want to look at in order to figure out which one is going to have the third uh, the highest third ionization energy because this is this th these are the configurations that that need to be ionized for the third ionization so what are we looking at that's interesting well we can see that magnesium and silicon have an s orbital that is completely full here and that is a particularly stabilizing situation so it's going to be a little bit harder than we would expect to ionize those species so it will be easiest to ionize sodium and the most difficult to ionize silicon but what will be a little bit anomalous is it's a little harder to ionize magnesium than we would expect so it's actually going to be a little harder to get magnesium than it will aluminum so the correct answer is going to be a because sodium is the easiest so we have sodium less than magnesium and then magnesium is actually going to be greater than aluminum which is contrary to the trend but it obeys this principle of orbital symmetry that we just outlined and then silicon is going to be greater than aluminum because that is the that obeys the trend and there is orbital symmetry so that's two reasons why we'd expect for it to be a little more difficult to ionize so that is going to be the correct trend for the third ionization energies for these elements thanks for watching guys subscribe to my channel for more tutorials support me on patreon so i can keep making content and as always feel free to email me professor dave explains at gmail.com